Good morning, everyone. Uh, so the first panel is going to continue kind of the theme of, of and it's going to be on engineering the microenvironment for, for stem cells. So um, Laura gave a great introduction to different aspects of tissue engineering. And you know, largely regenerative medicine is, of course, focused on the cell and stem cells. But you know, tissues are not just made up of cells, as Laura nicely demonstrated. You know, a lot of it is the extracellular matrix. And really, this 3D microenvironment that makes up our tissue. So um, all three of the speakers today are going to discuss different aspects of engineering, really, this 3D uh, microenvironment. A lot of it in terms of biomaterial scaffolds and you know, how we can use these tissue engineering principles to generate tissues. Uh, mainly, the, the discussion for the panel will be, or the, the topics for the speakers will be kind of in vitro um, applications. So, uh, the format for the panel is going to be each speaker is going to come up and give a, a brief talk, and then at the end, I'll invite all the speakers, um, including Dr. Nicholson, to come back up um, and to give you guys an opportunity to ask questions and also have a little bit of a discussion in terms of the different approaches to engineering the microenvironment for cells. So, uh, first up, I'd like to introduce uh, Xiao Chen Chen, who's a professor uh, in Nan engineering at UC San Diego and is going to talk about some of his new work with uh, 3D printing. Thank you, Karen. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I would like to talk about 3D printing as a tool and a technology, um, you know, how it can help with stem cell research, uh, um, then also how, you know, for, for tissue engineering in general. Um, so, Thanks for a lot of your great talk about tissue engineering, and we, we are working on similar approaches here. Uh, you know, tissue engineering is to, you, to organize cells uh, in a way that supported by uh, a um, three-dimensional scaffolds uh, with control uh, com components like growth factors, small molecules, uh, mechanical stimulation, physical guidance, and then you have those engineered tissue. Uh, used for either organ repair, uh, um, uh, regeneration, wound healing, as well as uh, uh, in vitro uh, drug screening purpose. And as a matter of fact, you know, uh, for each organ tissue, there are multiple cell types. So, so it's really cell lending kind of composite scaffolds that we are working on now. Um, so based on, you know, this overall goal, I've designed my lab in three areas of approaches. One is to investigate what material we can use uh, to provide the necessary mechanical, uh, biological, chemical uh, structure, function, and, and, uh, and the composition. Uh, the second is to um, organize these material that can have the right microarchitecture uh, to work for in vivo and in vitro applications. So specifically, uh, you know, I would like to, to uh, tell you that uh, the the 3D bioprint technology we are developing in the lab uh, are targeting uh, much finer printing resolution compared to the commercial ones and a much higher throughput. I'll show you later. Okay. Uh, so this is a traditional uh, 3D printing, uh, 3D printer, uh, usually using a nozzle to deliver the biological inks. Okay. And uh, you know, dot by dot and then layer by layer. Okay. Uh, typically, for each of these nozzles, um, the resolution is about 200 micron. So think about, you know, uh, this really is a physical confinement of drop, drop uh, de delivery with this kind of approach. So um, uh, I, I took a totally different approach. Instead of, you know, using a nozzle, actually I, uh, with my background in uh, laser optics, I use laser uh, or photon beam to polymerize the monomer solution, usually, you know, those are bio, uh, uh, um, biomaterials. And then through photopolymerization, we can turn the liquid into solid, okay? And, uh, you know, in semiconductor, we can control the light all the way down from micron to nanometer scale. So that allows us to have a printing resolution, uh, you know, from micron all the way to nanometer scale. And then we, we have been doing that for over 10 years. And at that time, we didn't call bioprinting. We call laser sterilization. It's, it's a scientifically interesting name, but not necessarily great for the public to, to look at. But anyway, so we, we you, you know, uh, have chosen a couple of biomaterial that we can use, that we can uh, play with. And this is a laser printed structures, uh, you, you know, with 
very engineered uh, designer fashion in terms of the pore size shapes we, we can do. And uh, you know, with the help of our so-called femtosecond laser, uh, we can confine the effect of polymerization, polymerization down to nanometer scale, and that allows us to generate those you know, sub-micron or you know, couple hundred nanometer patterns on the surface, either scaffolds, multi-layers, or you know, all these dot arrays. Okay. So most recently, um, we, we look at the capability of really try to, um, to push the throughput. So instead of doing one beam, la one laser beam at a time, we actually using a so-called digital micromere array. Usually you see that in the computer projector, they can project millions of light spots down to the surface. So we can do really po parallel processing without point by point scanning. Okay. So that, that's really the definition uh, the we, uh, I mean, unique contribution we have in terms of throughput. So as I mentioned that, th you know, this printing process is based on photo-induced polymerization so from monomer solution. So in a solution, you can put cells, you can put uh, control release particles, you can put other uh, particles or, or molecules, or even drugs into the system. Then, you know, you have a homogeneous solution, then you shine the light, um, and uh, everything in the light pass, focal spot will be locked up. So that's how you can uh, print the scaffold with a control by the light pattern and with the cell inside. And as I mentioned, that we have um, you know, used a couple of biomaterials, for instance, by uh, polyacrylate, glycol, diacrylate, ge uh, mesacrylate, gelatin, uh, and also hyaluronic acids. Those are all bicompatible compatible materials, some of them are biodegradable, some of them are not degradable. So it depends on the need of, of this. We can really uh, you know, develop a bunch of biological scaffolds with, with um, designer mechanical property and, and other properties. So uh, this is, for instance, is a slide, PowerPoint slide, and we project this slide. Instead of to the screen here, we project to the polymer solution. So you can write the whole pattern simultaneously just like doing PowerPoint. And if you don't like this shape, you change it in PowerPoint and get, get this uh, done. And you, you can do multi-layer structures. Um, so th these are the you know, three-dimensional conduits uh, can e easily be printed by this kind of structures. Okay, this is uh, hyaluronic acid materials. And we actually try strong cells uh, on that, and they survive, right? Um, in addition to that, I, you know, this is uh, vasculature-like structures. And then we take the data from, as long as the digital data, MRI, CT, or you know, other digital data by design, we can send to the computer and print it. Okay? So with this kind of complex structures, okay, those little channels are on the order of 10 micron, and we can print this whole thing in one second, in one second. So it's really not now point by point, then try to figure out the interfaces. Here we, we continuously build up these structures from the bottom all the way to up, okay? Um, you can see the cells in the structure if you want, uh, and then you uh, encapsulate cell in the structure as you want, and you can see the second cell on top or, or on bottom. So, you, so that allows you to do you know, multiple cell types co-culture, okay? And uh, to show you that, that you know, this kind of capability in the easiest way is we actually print those micro well arrays with well controlled uh, curvature of the well. So if you buy you know, those kind of uh, substrate from Corning, you have one shape you can play with in glass. Here we print them into the hydrogel with really the, the, the concave structure you, you want. Okay? And also you can control the cross-linking density. So each spot here or there could have different mechanical property. So you can build the, the stiffness along the concave. And uh, so you know, we, sh we use that to, to uh, look at uh, uh, EB, IPSC uh, EB development. Uh, you can see that the effect of the EB formation is quite different when, when we use different curvature of these kind of micro wells. Okay. And we have uh, morphological changes data you know, in different days of these IPSC cells. Uh, in addition, you know, we can create all these uh, engineered um, structures like this line arrays and put cell inside and see how these cells align with defined microstructures. And we can introduce disturbance 
in the systems and to see the disturbance of the alignment. Okay. And we also look at the, the um, other you know, uh, informations. This, in this case, is a symmetric disturbance. This is unsymmetric disturbance. So uh, the, this is a little bit, little bit light, but you, know, you can see uh, those are uh, nuclear stains. Uh, I can see that the, the pattern di did regulate the cell alignment. Okay. Um, in addition to the shape of the structure that we can print, we can also control the chemical composition because this is a solution based. If I don't like this solution, I want to put different type of cells, flush out, put a new one, print. Right? So you have uh, material A here, material B here on the same layer, material A on the top, material B on the bottom, for instance. Right? Um, then we can also encapsulate uh, functional nanoparticles uh, in the hydrogels uh, when you print it. So those particles are encapsulated. In, in the hydrogels uh, during this uh, photopolymerization process. And in this specific case, we published recently, we put a, a PDA nanoparticles. And those particles actually can uh, attract and trap uh, melatons, okay, in the solution. So, and, uh, you know, from, from observation point of view, uh, once they have uh, uh, bound together, uh, this transparent hydrogel becomes red. Okay, so it's, it's a very nice kind of tool to, um, to, to look at how these maritons are removed by this uh, nanoparticle encapsulated hydrogel. Uh, in addition to chemical control, I would like to show you that we, we can control the mechanical properties. Mechanical properties in, including stiffness, that's one thing. We can control the uh, molecular weight and, uh, and uh, cross-link density. Another property is called Poisson ratio. Means when you you know stretch materials in this direction, usually it shrinks in the other direction. Okay, that's called positive Poisson ratio material. Ninety-nine point nine percent of the material in the nature is, is, uh, are positive Poisson ratio material. And with a three D printing, we can create uh, this kind of unusual material uh, called negative Poisson ratio material. When you stretch it, it actually enlarges. Okay, in in the in the lateral direction. And it's, it's very flexible um, in terms of property. So uh, as an engineer, uh, we can you know, really do hybrid materials. So from printing point of view, it's very easy. As long as you change the PowerPoint design, you, you can create one side uh, positive material on the other side, the negative positive material. So with this, you know, this, I think this could be very useful for dynamic culturing. The, in this zoom, the cell experience shrinking in terms of strain. On the other zoom, cell could have an inspection type of uh, 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 strain to guide it you know, in terms of differentiation and cell growth. Okay. Um, so and the reason you can get it is, is because of those uh, you know, special geometry that you printed into the hydrogel. Right? And you can also do so-called zero percent ratio material. It means when you stretch it, the dimension in this direction, in the y direction, doesn't change. Okay? It doesn't change. Um, the last thing I would like to show you that we, we can encapture cells during the printing process. Because for polymerization, there is free radical generation in the process. And those are not you know, friend, uh, cell friendly. But uh, by, by adjusting the photo initiator types, concentration, uh, UV polymerization uh, time, uh, it, it, we can actually manage this cell survival rate to between you know, 85% to 95%. Uh, with, with a cell inside. And uh, as you see, we can print very much all kinds of shapes as you want, right? And uh, these cells are encapsulated inside in the gel, and uh, this is a confocal microscope images. And you can see, you know, cell morphology is quite different from inside to uh, outside. And last, to show you that these cells are alive, uh, the best way to show is to use cardiac cells. So, uh, you know, the cells are encapsulated in gel, and day seven, they start to beat, okay? And then we did a little bit of engineering. You know, instead of doing just a flat gel, I put a, a line, the pattern in the gel, okay? Think about, you know, muscle alignment. And you can see the frequency of beating is quite different. So this, this case is very much random, uh, much high frequency, but this one is more robust, organized. So, so the, I think the reason is, you know, this alignment of this hydrogel helps these cells to communicate in a better way. Okay. 
So with that, uh, my time is up. I would like to uh, summarize that you know, we, using light processing for polymerization, we can achieve much better resolution in terms of uh, printing. Okay? And we can generate the scaffolds with or without cell, uh, with control in terms of porosity, shapes, uh, stiffness, Poisson ratio, chemical composition, and uh, yeah, of course, you know, cell encapsulation. And we have been working with uh, uh, different types of biopolymers like poison glyco, gelatin methylate, hyaluronic acid, and, uh, and their combination to tune the mechanical properties and for different tissue models uh, if, if with application in, for either in vivo, uh, repair, uh, tissue repair, or in vitro tissue modeling, disease modeling, and address screening. So thank you very much.